Hey guys, welcome to, what is this, the fifth set? It's tied 2-2 between East versus West. We have Joe Lin, who's been a great player uh, for his team at, uh, what is J2, University of Texas, starting the upper right-hand corner, special shot to them. As the red Zerg bottom left-hand corner, we're going to have Freaky from McGill, and he has been an excellent player for McGill as well. He's going to be that off-color Zerg, which I really dislike, and it's going to be Zerg versus Zerg on match point, which is not what I expected. I expected to see a Terran fielded on this map, but uh, I don't know how this is going to work, ZVZ. It's a two-player map, so at least you're not going to see... You should see some straight-up builds. I don't expect a 12 hatch, but um, Zerg vs. Zerg is awkward to begin with. This is going to be a very Zergling heavy map. I think it's just going to come down to who can manage more Zerglings, because I can't see you doing anything but Zerglings. Because look how wide that choke is, look how wide this choke is. Um, yeah, you have a ramp there, but Zerglings run rampant here. I don't think you can produce enough Zerglings to really defend anything, so it's going to come down to Zergling on Zergling Micro. Um, and if you somehow manage to sneak a Mutalisk before your opponent does, I, I could see that being GG, but I can't I can't see Mutalisks ever coming into this match at all, and I think the best strategy altogether for Zerg versus Zerg is, yeah, Zerglings, 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 more Zerglings, maybe Speed Zerglings, um, Zergling Pa, Zergling Sharpe, Zergling Frappe, Zerglings in a Blender, um, Bubba Gump style. Just as many Zerglings as possible, just to play it off. And I think, wow, I, I think that this 12th pool might play off best in this situation. So we're going to see gas. So it looks like Freaky's going to go gas first. So if he goes with the Zerglings um, and gets that Overlord out, and gets the speed Zerglings and gets them across the field a little bit sooner, that could work out. But uh, and maybe that's a really late pool. No, he's going 12th hatch interior. Wow. Wow, this is crazy play. This might pay off, though, because the way this works is he's going to put a spawning pool to follow this up, get two something colonies, and try to defend. And this is this is a build that wouldn't work on other maps, I think, but I think it'll work on this map because you know you're not going to have to deal with Mutalisks and things like that, um, in theory. Uh, and you can produce a lot of Zerglings to kind of follow that up, and you end up in a little bit of defensive position for just a second, but after that you can produce a lot of Zerglings to kind of run back at your, your opponent. So Freaky, better watch out. Jolin is, uh, we'll see how this, this works out for him. He's also getting an extractor here, which confuses me a little bit, because again, I think to work with this strategy, he just needs to run with the straight Zerglings and not worry about going, uh, I think what he's thinking is, is I'm going to go defensive. I'm going to put down my two something colonies, and I'm gonna just going to play defense from there. And right now, if he tries to do that, yeah, it looks like Freaky's actually going up to Lair. He's going to go up to, to Mutalist Tech. He's just going to end up behind. He's going to be way too uh, too far behind to get that, um, that Lair up. He's not going to be able to defend his main. The Mutalists are just going to be wandering in. I'm um, destroying everything. He's really not going to end up paying, though, for the second hatch. He doesn't look like he's even going to need to take down um, two additional sunken colonies, but Freaky is actually in a great position right now. He's behind in production right now. I don't know how he's going to defend this hatchery at his natural secondary against any sort of Zergling attack right now, but nevertheless, um, he should have that layer out with plenty of time. He just needs to really cancel and consolidate is what it comes down to but a, a lot of Zergling is going to come flooding out his direction he's going to have a difficult time defending this um, really the biggest play for Joe Lin is just to make sure that he forces Zerglings from Freaky make sure that he can't ever produce a Mutalisk with any larva you can see Freaky just trying to look at that even with the the line he's trying to make with Zerglings from here to here first of all the Zerglings can run around there but that's just a huge line of Zerglings you'd need to try to defend this um, and there's a big pile of Zerglings on the opposite side from Joe it looks like he is getting Zergling speed and the layers. So right now, Jolin's strategy is just to run in with as many Zerglings as possible right as that Spire is coming online and make sure that no Mulusks can be produced to begin with. He's moving across with those Zerglings that will be speed upgraded uh, in just a moment. And right now, Freaky, yeah, again, I think his best bet is just to sacrifice this natural expansion, um, pull back away from it, and try to get the Mulusks up in the air, uh, run up and, and try to... He's got a think, oh, okay, hey, I see this layer's not even finished. My spire is almost done, uh, or is going to be way is done way ahead. It's about halfway finished, I should say. He's going to get a Sutton Colony on his front door, but again, the Sutton Colony really, the Zerglings can run all the way around and back down into the main. And it looks like they're engaging before the Sutton Colony is even online, and somehow it looks like Freaky has more Zerglings out than Jolin Dud, it, 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 Dud does, um, just uh, didn't have them in really good kind of engagement position. And I don't think speed is up quite yet either. It might have just completed 
But uh, yeah, just finished right as I clicked on it. But now it looks like Fihi actually is going to be able to defend his natural secondary just by a disjointed attack from Jolin. If Jolin had waited just another half a second, even with that creep colony there, I think he would have been able to come out with that attack. But now Fihi able to defend that natural secondary, produce a lot of zerglings just off the larva he has there, and get mutalisks. He needs to save larva now, actually. He needs to save larva a couple seconds ago to get this out. Um, so right now, Jolin, uh, yeah, doing what he I think he wanted to do here and force Freaky to not produce any mutalisks. And this is going to be really tentative from Freaky because if Freaky can get out just even one or two mutalisks right here at this stage of the game, he's going to be in an excellent, excellent position because there's nothing that Jolin can do to defend this. You can see he's, his spire's not even halfway finished, but right now Freaky's just in such a psychological position that he doesn't want to get run over by just this huge Zergling attack that he's continuing to produce uh, nothing but Zerglings, and it looks like he's going to take out an Overlord instead. That's actually kind of a clever maneuver because that's going to hurt supply-wise. Um, he's not going to be able to kind of fill that with more Zerglings, first of all which might give him some space on Larva. Additionally, he's going to have to spend in the Larva on an Overlord. And there's two Mutalists he's going to be able to produce there. Huge attack crashing down on the front door, right as I was saying that. So, um, this again, this isn't too horrible for Freaky. Yes, he might lose this natural secondary, but still he'll be able to get the Mutalists out in the air. Um, he'll be able to do enough damage to try to make up for this, losing the second hatchery. All he has to do is run these Mutalists up, uh, get a couple Zerglings underneath, uh, and take this out. And as long as he can defend his main and this natural secondary, or sorry, if, as long as he can defend his main, kill these Zerglings before they're able to take out a lot of drones, he'll end up in a really good position so now he just needs to yeah defend with these drones um uh, let's see if he's able to do so it looks like a couple of the zerglings running through he hasn't lost any drones yet beautiful defense from freaky and he's got two mutalisks up in the air more zerglings starting to flood down uh, on the opposite though opposite side though it looks like some scourge being produced more zerglings working their way down uh, a couple engaging on the ramp and because they're coming out piecemeal it looks like freaky's going to get some bonus Zergling kills. So a very intense match. I think Freaky is actually in a really good position though uh, to kind of fight this out. Unfortunately though, um, if Jolin kind of stops producing Zerglings for a second and realizes he's in a good spot to produce, uh, doing counter overlord attack right there, and then realizes he's in a really good position to produce Mutalisks with the amount of larva he has and the amount of gas, because he's got a, an extreme gas advantage right now it looks like comparatively. Also able to kill an Overlord right there, but Freaky able to sneak out another Mutalisk. Um, Freaky still in a defensive spot. Uh, Freak, it looks like Jolin now taking out his natural secondary. A couple Scourge wandering up. I think they just want to scout things out because they had no idea what was going on. But again, I think if Jolin had just produced straight Mutalisks, he doesn't have a lot of minerals to work with here either. Instead of Zerglings, and instead of investing it the other way around, he'd be in a pretty good spot. Looks like he's looking to... Uh, suicide Scourge. Looks like he wants to snipe, wants to run and take out that Mutalisk, but not quite able to. So it's a lot of Mutalisks versus a lot of Scourge and a couple Zerglings underneath. And it looks like that second base, uh, that additional base being taken out. So it's up to Freaky to run up and do something now to kind of even things up. He's got air superiority, and he should be able to maintain air superiority once he gets another Overlord out. That Overlord um, looks like it's going to be extremely delayed. So it looks like actually those two, that one Overlord kill was pretty sizable.